The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hello and welcome to the Ball Minnesota Timberwolves podcast. My name is Stuart Burkhart. I am your host. You can follow me on Twitter at beefstew69. That's B E E F S T U 69. And make sure to check us out at hoop-ball.com. All the basketball content you're looking for be that daily fantasy, be that season long fantasy. Also, have other team podcasts like this and betting content as well. Be sure to check all that out at hoop-ball.com. Excellent stuff over there. Today on the Hoopball Minnesota Timberwolves podcast, want to talk a little bit about the game that the Timberwolves most recently played, which was this past Wednesday against the Dallas Mavericks, and the Timberwolves lost that game. I do also want to talk about the trade deadline, So, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the Rockets. Uh, the Timberwolves tonight start a series against the Rockets. It's a two-game little mini-series, as most of them are. And they'll play tonight and tomorrow night against the Rockets. So let's jump right into it. Uh, we'll start with the trade deadline. I will now recap all of the moves the Timberwolves made this trade deadline. And that was all of the moves the Timberwolves made this trade deadline because they didn't make any. Um, I'm being a little facetious, but essentially the Wolves, John Krasinski reported, the Wolves decided they wanted to stay pat because they wanted to see what they had in the players that they have. So they wanted to see D'Angelo Russell back and see him and Malik Beasley playing with Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards and see how that looks, and see how those guys all look together. It'll be interesting to see what that looks like. Obviously, I have been beating the drum on this podcast that none of it really matters or means anything until those guys are back. So until those guys are back, there's there's really, you know, it's... The development of Anthony Edwards is nice, but it does feel a little empty watching the games I still will because I love the Timberwolves but there is sort of a little bit of of a, of a tough feeling watching these games without two of the team's three best players and especially in a season like this it's easy to feel lost um, but you're looking for development and not just in Anthony Edwards or even in Carl Anthony Towns and I think there has been a definite defensive um, development in Carl Anthony Towns that we've seen throughout this year and I think especially as a rim protector Carl Anthony Towns is much improved but also seeing some other guys develop guys like Jade McDaniels guys like Jared Vanderbilt guys like Jalen Noel to see those guys develop is a huge part of this season and a huge part of why the season is important so the Wolves didn't make a splashy move. They didn't go out and get Nikola Vucevic or Victor Oladipo. They didn't have to. They didn't go out and get John Collins or Aaron Gordon, but they didn't have to. The truth of the matter is, the Timberwolves don't have to get rid of any of the players that they're thinking of trading because no one really has an expiring contract. I think everyone except for Ed Davis is under contract for next year. Or everyone except for Ed Davis and Jalen Noel is under contract for next year. Uh, Jordan McLaughlin's a restricted free agent. Basically the entire team. So when, when Gerson Rosas looks at it, he says, I have no idea what I have still, because he doesn't. And I can just blow it all up in the offseason, because he can And I think that's something to look out for is, you know, when you're watching the development, keep in mind that if 
things look weird with D'Angelo Russell, with Malik Beasley, with Carl Anthony Towns, with Anthony Edwards, with that group as a whole. Because those four pieces, those are the main pieces of the Timberwolves right now. And I think you could kind of slot Jaden McDaniels in there as sort of the fifth piece, but not quite yet. I want to see more from him before we're willing to, to say that. But I do think that if those things don't go well, if those guys come back and this team looks basically the same with those two, then it is going to be a question of, well, when is Garrison Rosas? Because I do believe that if this team, if those guys come back and this team struggles the way they have been struggling without those guys, Garrison Rosas is going to look to move on from one or multiple of them. And, you know, he has the savvy to pull it off. That is who Garrison Rosas is. He is a GM who he wants to make moves. He wants to, you know, do crazy stuff. And and we will see if that bears out in the offseason. But as far as the trade deadline is concerned, the Wolves have stood pat. So if you were hoping to be re-energized by some new acquisition. I hate to break it to you, but the Wolves will not be acquiring anyone until this offseason. Now, I do think the Wolves will be active this offseason. And one of the other things I like about them staying pat, and I was advocating for this, friend of the podcast, Ben Beacon, was advocating for this. And a lot of the Wolves beat writers were advocating for staying pat. And the reason is, you don't know if your pick is going to pan out, and if you blow it up and then your pick doesn't pan out, it might look really bad. And you just don't know what you have in D'Angelo Russell, frankly. You know, people, I've heard folks, uh, my own friends over at Hoopball, were saying they thought that Anthony Edwards is better than D'Angelo Russell. I don't necessarily agree with that. In fact, I don't at all agree with that. D'Angelo Russell is a much more efficient scorer than Anthony Edwards. But I will say that Tanzel Russell has never had a teammate like Carl Anthony Towns. He's never had someone to run the pick and roll with who's as good as Carl Anthony Towns at the center spot. He's, he's played with Jared Allen. Jared Allen's good. But he's never had a, a center like Carl Anthony Towns because there's only like four of them in the league, five of them in the league. There's only a couple of guys who can do what Carl Anthony Towns can do offensively in the pick and roll. And so D'Angelo Russell, in spite of the the accusations that, that he's some inefficient, useless person, he's, you know, he's a useless basketball player, he just shoots mid-range jumpers, that's all he does, he's living in the past, it is impossible to evaluate him until you actually get to see him play with all of the teammates. And I think the same is true of any of these guys. I mean, Anthony Edwards has been has been pretty good, and lately he's had a little bit of a, a stretch of inefficiency again, but he's still putting up numbers. The thing is, Anthony Edwards isn't going to be able to be well-evaluated without Carl Anthony Towns, Malik Beasley, and D'Angelo Russell all in the lineup. When he has to deal with all those guys getting touches then it's going to be interesting to see what the usage looks like for Anthony Edwards. For instance, in this last game against the Mavericks, he attempted 23 shots. Carl Anthony Towns attempted 20 shots. The next most, 9 from Juancho Hernan Gomez. And that's how it should be, frankly. When these two are in, when D'Angelo Russell and Malik Beasley are not in, why have those two take fewer shots and that was something that was happening with Carl recently where he was taking fewer shots and a lot of people complained about it and it's been rectified Carl's been shooting a lot more still the inefficiencies have been glaring from Anthony Edwards and frankly from Carl Anthony Towns inside the arc he has not been very efficient it is both a product of him not getting foul calls, which he has basically not gotten to the line at all lately. 
like maybe once or twice a game. And it's a product of that and also something that I'm going to do a deep dive into for our next podcast. I want to see how this Rockets series shakes out. Carl Anthony Towns taking a lot more mid-range shots. I feel like D'Lo is sitting there whispering to him when he's on the bench. Hey, man, you're opening that mid-range shot. you got to just pull up there. I'm I'm mostly kidding here, but I, I do think that it'll be interesting to see how that plays out this, this weekend with these two games. So I'm going to watch these games. I'm going to watch closely for how Carl Anthony Towns shoots mid-range shots. And then um, when we're back, either Sunday or Monday, I'm going to do a sort of deep dive into the numbers on Carl Anthony Towns and the efficiency he has on those shots and see if that has been impacting him because he's he's shooting a worse. I mean, he's for the season, he's still around 50%. But the last few games, he's been much lower than that. In spite of shooting well from three, that's what's confusing is – He's been shooting above 40% from the three-point line in the last two games. He had that big game where he shot 5 of 7 or 5 of 8, whatever it was. And in this game, he was 4 of 9. That's 44%. That's really, really good. You're very happy with that. But it's tough. It is tough with the efficiency being down for Carl Anthony Towns. That's not the big problem. The big problem is this team can't guard anybody. And I mean anybody. If you look up and down the the Mavs box score, everybody was positive. They had one negative player. And it was Trey Burke. Fortunately. I'm not a Trey Burke fan, so... It's because he went to Michigan. That's a different story. I'm sorry if you're a Michigan fan, listeners. But... I mean, really, at the end of the day, Luka didn't even have a good game. Luka, 6 of 16. 2 of 9 from beyond the arc. 1 of 2 from the line. He had 15 points. 4 rebounds, 4 assists. Steal and a block. I mean, not a huge game from Luka. But you know what a huge game? And you do, because it's, even if you didn't watch this game, if you've watched them play the Mavs this year, the other time they played the Mavs, you know there is a certain guy on the Mavs who just always will kill the Wolves, and it's Chris Tapps Porzingis. He had 29 points. He had 9 rebounds. And then, weirdly, Dwight Powell had 16 points and 8 rebounds. They couldn't guard Dwight Powell. That was something that was concerning to me, and actually something that made me a little sad about the trade deadline. I was kind of hoping that this team would make a move and acquire a real backup center. No offense to Nas Reed, but Nas Reed cannot defend the five. He just can't. He can't really defend the four either, but, you know, I think Nas Reed is someone who he can make plays sometimes. It's just that when you have him or Jared Vanderbilt or Jade McDaniels playing the five, or even Juancho Hernan Gomez playing the five, it's going to be tough. You're not going to be able to, to, to guard good centers. And that's why I would have liked to have seen them make a move. I mean, there were so many centers that shifted hands during the trade deadline yesterday. I thought the Wolves could have jumped in to be a salary filler and take on some veteran center who could play some defense and make the team look a little more respectable. I mean, you're probably not getting your pick, so I don't understand why they would still sort of look at this as a a tanky. I understand they want to see what they have, and they want to develop and potentially raise the trade value of someone like Nas Reed or, or Jared Vanderbilt, right? But... I don't see it. I think that it's frustrating. I like seeing Jared Vanderbilt, or excuse me, I like seeing Nas Reed used in 
big lineups where it's him and another center, where it's him with Carl Anthony Towns. That's the only other center they have right now. But I would like to see them have another real center and use um, use Nas Reed with that other center to sort of have it be a change of pace lineup. Hey, we're going to go big when you guys, you know, everyone's zigging, we'll zag. Same thing, the Lakers are doing this. Everyone's going small ball. The Lakers have a lineup. You know, the Rockets had the lineup. Everyone, 6'7 or under. The Lakers might have a lineup of everyone 6'7 or over. It's kind of hilarious, but I think it's an effective strategy to do that. You give yourself the ability, if you have switchable defenders, to have a better defense, to have length that you can use both defensively and offensively in the post and it's it's really to me sort of I think going to be a counter movement you know the, the league is always changing the ebbs and flows of leagues as they shift I think there's going to be a shift back towards size now I think that the the three-point shooting that's become so prevalent is not going away so I think that guys who have size and can shoot, guys like Brooke Lopez, guys like Al Horford, those kinds of guys are going to become the centers and and the most desirable players of the future because they can provide size and defense, and they can also shoot. So basically 3 and D, bigger 3 and D guys, you know, not just 3 and D scrappy little 6-3 guys, 3 and D legit Kawhi, I mean, obviously not everyone can be Kawhi Leonard, but, you know, if you have someone like that who can switch into multiple positions, someone like Robert Covington who can switch into multiple positions, can guard one through five, it really brings a flexibility to your team that I don't think the Timberwolves have right now. I don't think they have anyone who is switchable like that. Maybe Jaden McDaniels. There were times in this game when he was guarding Luka Doncic, which I, I thought was really interesting. And I kind of, I did love to see Jaden McDaniels guarding the other team's best player. I think he is, he definitely has potential to be this team's best defender. He's already close to it. And I think that he has potential to be a really, really good NBA defender. Gotta love Jaden McDaniels. That's all I'll say on that. Let's shift now before we head out for the evening to look forward to the Rockets. So the Rockets did trade Victor Oladipo yesterday. But the Rockets are terrible. I mean, you know, we played the Thunder earlier this week, and the Thunder are not good. The Wolves, with Carl Anthony Towns and with Anthony Edwards, should have beaten that Thunder team. And the Thunder team just got really hot. But what we have with this Rockets team is a team that is much worse than this Thunder team. I mean, the Rockets are, I think, pretty easily the worst team in the NBA. I feel fairly confident saying that the Pistons are pretty bad too, but I think this is the worst team in the NBA. At least the Pistons have Jeremy Grant. I mean, who's the best player on the Rockets? Christian Wood, I, I should say. I Sorry, Christian, Wood, forgot about you for a second there. But the, the Rockets are really not good. They're bad. They're genuinely very bad. Obviously, you know, being an Ohio State guy, I'm a big Jayshon Tate fan, but it's not like Jayshon Tate on a really good team is going to be a starter. I mean, he's he's a good rotation player on a good team, but he's their second best player right now. It's really bad. They are horrible. The Wolves should easily sweep them. They'll get Malik Beasley back tomorrow for the second game of this series, and... I am going to be very interested to see how Carl Anthony Towns does guarding Christian Wood. That, I think, is one of my biggest things to watch for, is let's watch for how Carl Anthony Towns does defending Christian Wood, who's one of the best offensive centers in the NBA. And then let's look as well for the return of Malik Beasley tomorrow. I'm very excited about that. And I think that my new favorite thing to watch is, what do they do with Jaden McDaniels? When they're not playing a zone... Who do they have Jaden McDaniels guarding? Like I said, against the Mavs on Wednesday, Jaden McDaniels was guarding Luka Doncic. So do they stick Jaden McDaniels on Jayshon Tate in this game? It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see who starts for the Wolves. I expect they will probably 
run with Ricky Rubio and Anthony Edwards and D'Angelo or and uh, Carl Anthony Towns. Those three, I'm certain, they will start. It's a three and four where I'm not sure, and I like when Finch has been starting Vanderbilt and McDaniel's together. That to me is is their best. Without obviously the caveat of no D'Angelo Russell, no Malik Beasley in that starting lineup. That, to me, is their best starting lineup right now with the guys they have available. So I think that we'll see that tonight. And I think that tomorrow night we'll probably see uh, McDaniels go back to the bench, Edwards slide to the three, and then Beasley at the two when Beasley's eligible to return. Beasley has been practicing with the team, so he should be ramped up. He should be ready to go. I completely expect to see him in the lineup tomorrow. I have not seen any indication otherwise. Of course... Please follow me on Twitter at BeefStu69, B-E-E-F-S-T-U-6-9. And I will keep you guys posted there to make sure if any news breaks, if we know for some reason Malik Beasley is not going to return tomorrow, something weird happens, we'll have that all for you there. Also, follow us on Twitter at HoopBallWolves. It's at HBWolves. That is a great place. They're going to give you all of those quick-hitting little news and notes from the Timberwolves. From the beat writers, it's really an excellent, excellent source, and they'll always tweet out the podcast. So turn on notifications for that. You can be up to date on all the Wolves news as soon as it breaks. And be sure to check us out over at hoop-ball.com. There you can get all the basketball content you're looking for, whether that's other team podcasts like this one, daily fantasy, season-long fantasy, betting, anything like that. Guys, thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.